put together a video for harmonica players of every level, whether you just started today, yesterday, or plan to start in the future, you can get into this, what we're going to do, but we're going to, can't cover it all in one video, but this is laying the foundation here, and what it's about is about an essential note in the blues scale, one note really, but it's a note that involves bending. What I did was take the C harp and record a bunch of shorts on the Special 20, and I'm going to upload those as shorts individually, and then I'm going to put them all together because they're all related to this one theme here which is how to get a very specific bend on the two hole draw I'm sorry on the three hole draw the two hole draw we're not bending at this time I mean I did a little in the video but that wasn't what it was all about I did a bend on the two hole draw when I played that funeral dirge for you but I was focusing on the three hole draw with this one and it's interesting because when you what I've been listening to a lot lately a common theme when you think about blues uh, singers harp players or guitar players is this notion of mixing major and minor and like when I was talking about doing the hammer on, on the G string on the acoustic guitar and that's like a theme in the blues when you think about it um, and not just when you talk about the technical stuff but even think about the lyrics and so on so before you get the bend you need to be able to you saw how I was pausing when I was moving notes Playing one note, pause, then moving the harp, then playing it, then then moving the harp. So I, I, in other words, I was positioning the harp before I started playing. And precision and tone, and you could see where there was vibrato included and, and where there wasn't, where there was bending included and where there wasn't. Uh, you have to listen a little bit, but we're going to break things down as far as I got future things coming up, videos and whatnot. But you might be wondering where I've been because I sort of disappeared a little bit. And disappear for too long, well, it depends, but I always have in my mind when I get the chance what I'm gonna do. And where have I been? Because I'm back for a little while now. Well, I told you, if you've been following, if you've been listening to what I, what I had to do. I had to cover for this maintenance guy. And I don't care if I get a little personal, but uh, I won't say any names. It's nothing bad, but I cover for it. It's good, but I cover for the guy and for about six days straight. Doing his job for this guy that's revered over at this place except when I did it now they started pointing out things that he's been doing all along that all of a sudden nobody had a problem with but um no I, I, I went to cover for this guy who does uh, see in fast food there's all these ma maintenance tasks that need to be done per day or and then there's ones that happen when they happen, like the delivery truck and all that, putting that away. Heavy frozen boxes and whatnot. And one of the things that's supposed to be done daily is this oil filtering. The filtering of the uh, dry frying machines with oil, basically. And so there's a machine that you, you line it up on the ground with the bottom of the thing. Because uh, there's separate things here. And you attach this pipe to it. 
by screwing it in the hole. And then you, before that, you put a piece of paper on the, special paper on the bottom of this machine. And you put this square contraption over it. And then you, you wheel it all the way over. You would try to attach this hose thing to it, which kept falling off the day before. And uh, you release the oil. The problem is when you release the oil into this machine, it was clogged or something. It was built up with something, I don't know. And so you had to scoop it, scoop it normally, but then you had to scoop it like a, like no tomorrow. And um, see, I have worked at McDonald's previously. I'm not working at McDonald's. Now I'm working for the competitor across the street. I worked at McDonald's for five years and I always looked at the maintenance guy doing like filtering and stuff and, and said that doesn't really look like something I want to do and then the way this one goes it's even dirtier it's even filthier um everything all over the floor so these pipes are all clogged and whatnot and um and I was doing all right. I, I got the knack of what it's all about. I got the gist of what it was all about. We had about three sessions with this guy. I'd meet with him every Saturday doing my normal thing, the kitchen stuff. And one of the days I wound up doing both. And and that's all well and good. But, um, I don't, and, I, I accept the, the challenge and stuff. That's where I've been. I've been um, going six days straight covering for this guy. So there's no way I could even think about recording any, putting anything together. It was a challenge and it was something I was, I'm not going to say dreading, but I was nervous about going into it. But I went into it every day with a good attitude. Um, to learn something new but I don't feel I got the proper training really and I don't feel the the machines need some, some kind of maintenance that I mean you basically have to poke it with a metal rod or something and, um, and today it wasn't working and the day before the hose thing that you used to spray all the inside of it with the same oil is uh was it wasn't staying on today it was staying on and before this i've done the kitchen opening that's what i did before i think that's why i wound up doing kitchen opening again but the, the, i mean the things you you have to do Because you try to go in with a good attitude and you know, ready for whatever's going to happen and give it your best effort. And the thing is that I don't have the patience for is the just like the the side remarks, the the left field remarks, comments. That you may get by people that don't have understanding of um, certain sort of skills, and I don't mean skills on how to deal with oil or things like that. I mean um, just understanding how to deal with people is it's kind of rare. You see, and I'm not saying anywhere specific or anybody, but no matter where you go, you see a lot of mediocre customer service kind of things happening. Because everybody needs employment as well as money. To have somebody with a personality that's got to that stand up for themselves, for somebody else, 
kind of chime in and they have sensibility about themselves. And I don't, you know, I'm not above criticism at all. I, I welcome it. But there's a thing called tactfulness. How do you say something? How do you... The way you say something not to be insulting towards somebody because I guarantee you most people want to just do the simple thing the maybe kind of easy thing and I'm doing the, I went straight to the hard some of the hardest thing I must look like I could take some abuse or something because because this other guy that I'm covering for is a very tough looking guy also not a big guy but my, my grandmother used to have a saying. She'd see a tough-looking guy, and she'd say, like on TV or something, she'd say, he looked like a boxer. I wouldn't want to get a hit from him. And that's how I feel about this guy. I feel like if he punched you in the stomach, it would kill you. Like I said, he's not a big guy at all. But he, he looks strong. He's got strong hands, and he's doing hard, hard, very hard work. And he's a nice guy, but he hardly speaks English. And I don't feel I got the proper training of all the things that can malfunction with these things. And when I went in and gave my best effort, I did all the way, all real good all until the last day, even which is today. I guess now it's a new day because it's very late in the morning. I did all well until... Uh, someone said, uh, the person there, the uh, shift manager there, said something along the lines of, well, I guess the boss uh, thought you were thought you were going to do a good job or something, and he was wrong. Now, here I am. I played a role of trying to get this guy uh, on his on his vacation that he hasn't had in four years or something. He's been working there for 10. And I tried to get him on, on his vacation. I did successfully. He's coming back today, probably up, getting up soon to go back. Because of me, I played an essential role. I did the maintenance, not to mention my normal maintenance stuff which is going outside and cleaning the whole parking lot. Well, obviously doing all trash. Today I even did things in the bathroom that I don't normally do, such as I mean, change the trash in the bathroom, which I don't normally do. So I change the trash all over the place on the inside and out. Normally I just don't do the bathroom. I don't do anything to do with bathroom. Today I did that. Um... On top of that, I did my regular cooking job, um, opening job, which is cooking and all the sandwiches throughout the whole breakfast and setting up for lunch. Pretty much just like I used to do at McDonald's. It sounds identical. But I had to do the six days straight covering for this guy that time. And then I was too, too, way too tired to, because I don't have to get up early tomorrow again. But I was doing fine until that comment when, when she came over to, and I told her it's clogged or something or whatever. Well, he thought you were going to do a good job, I guess he was wrong, and something along those lines. And then, and then saying to tell him that he wouldn't want to do this again. Or he didn't like it. And then I was putting words in my mouth. Because I had never. Because I, the way I went at it. Was someone who could tolerate that sort of thing. I guess. And then I so I told her that. I would be available to do it again. If you wanted to. So these men. The, and I hate to say it. And I like them. They're nice people. And they're very, very good to me and everything. But. You don't see the real people that really get people and 
Because I'm not a half-baked kind of person. I'm, I'm a very versatile type of person. I've been doing... When you think about McDonald's and then the whole uh, deadly debacle, and then you think about what I'm doing now. I started when I was 21, and now I'm 29. So that's a long time. There was a period of time where I was out of work. That was when the, the deadly debacle was happening. But um, I went right back to what I was doing before for the competitors. And sometimes a trend you see is some people just don't get it. Well, left field comments don't add to a whole lot. And sometimes people have different motivations for it. And some people don't mean uh, any harm or don't mean anything by it. Some people do mean something by it. I'm not, I'm speaking generally outside of my own, you know, past experience, whatever. But that's what I did. And I did do a damn good job of it the best I could. I've never done that sort of maintenance work in my life. This is why people get thrown on machines and things if you're a machinist and you, people lose their fingers. Because people call out and then you're left to run the machine by yourself and you don't have the right training. And next thing you know, you're Tony Iommi. And, and you work together with some enthusiasm, and, and you can crit criticize someone if, if it warrants it. But um, I, if, I always say this to myself. I say, um, I can take a lot of abuse if I deserve it. But if I don't deserve it, I have a really hard time taking it. So I just respectfully, tactfully, will always stand up for myself and I'll decide whether I want to speak to the boss, tell him if I want to, uh, my, my perspective uh, on, on the, that last day there. Because I don't have any problem speaking up. I, don't, I, I spoke up once prior to or I've been there since November now. It's, um, now we're in the middle of August. Before we know it'll be end of August into September. And it'll be November again. And there's, a, there's one more time I had to speak up for myself when the girl was late. She hasn't been late since I spoke up to that. And when you sit there taking on 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 justified insults or things that aren't and you just sit there like a little shrimp and you just take this stuff and you're doing good no sorry I have a spine that's that's not gonna go and I'm the nicest guy in the world but you have to have a spine in this world and you have to be able to respectfully you don't because you, you can also in this world your emotional or your lack of sleep, anything can happen. You can let the wrong thing slip out. Because that's all it is, is words. You let the, the wrong word slip out and... Next thing you know, you say the wrong thing. So I'm always... At this point in my life now, I'm very tactful, very respectful. But also self-aware that you don't let yourself get trampled on by people. And I'm just going to continue forward, see what happens. It's almost, it's almost like I'm on borrowed time because I never imagined I'd be back working for the competitors across the street. And I'm grateful to be learning all sorts of new things. That's an important thing to be able to learn, to say, okay... Uh, I can um, do these sorts of tasks without like maintenance, the real serious maintenance skills. That's a good thing to, to say, okay, I covered for a guy who was there for 10 years and he was this revered person. And I covered for him and it was successful. It's just on the last day they had to throw me a little side remark for some reason after we 
got through it all after six days. Or I had to, and that's good for you because an opinion is, uh, is uh, you know, and I'm not taking my work home with me. I'm just sharing because someone might learn from this experience. They might say, okay, well, this is what you can come to expect. It's not just one place. You go to different places and you'll see these sorts of scenarios. And when you're a guy who can really do it, I can do anything. I can do dishes. I can take your order if they train me right. I never, I've only worked a register one day in my life. But if they train me right, I can do it. That, that's what I would be the best at. People, things with people, not grease. I'm not a grease specialist. But no matter what I say, they got me doing the most, the, the dirtiest, most hand labor intensive type of things rather than the most use your mind and your charisma and your language type of things. And I don't know what I have to say. Maybe I have to learn all the hardest stuff first before I can do what I'd like to do. I'm not sure, but I... The moral of the story is to stick up for yourself when you know deep down what's being said is wrong. To do it respectfully. Some people, they might be young, they might be on their first first job or what have you, and they, they might get complacent or they might just not have those sorts of all-around people skills at all times. No, some people take out their frustrations on others. That's and it might not even be in uh, in the form of a written or a verbal thing. It might be just an expression. And you'd be surprised what people say just with, by looking at you. Because they'll say something like, um, they'll say something to them, they'll look at you with their eye rolling. I'm like, oh, what is that saying? That's like, oh, I, could, I couldn't care less <laughs> what you have to say. So I feel good for you. And, and sometimes you'll hear that from people. Go ahead, tell them I don't care. Well, it's obvious you don't care because if you cared, you wouldn't say things like that to people. You know how to treat people. Um, and I'm treated pretty great. I get free things, free food. Not, I don't help myself with food, but I get something to get me through for the early morning and then the day when I stay till 3 see 6 to 3 is what they say the normal opening thing and then it used to be 4 to 1 over the course of uh, McDonald's so this is I couldn't do 4 to 1 anymore that's ridiculous but oh uh, this 6 to 3 yeah, I don't think there's any shift earlier than six for me and I wanted to be a night person no matter what I said I couldn't become a night person despite the fact they were looking for closers the whole time so I've just been persevering doing my absolute best while I'm trying to make the schedule work to still record and still improve and one good thing is I take the harp with me and I play that stuff I play in the parking lot I play it Sometimes when I get out, I play in the park. My vibrato's getting strong. The tone is getting good. Better. Knowledge of the harp's getting sharper. And just my musical ear is getting better. Um, but, the, you know, this is what you get. And, I, and like I said, opinions, you know what they're like. And um, it's never going to be perfect. I was walking, as I walked, and I was seeing people laying down the pavement in the street, the smelly truck, and the hot, you know, the hot day of just a truck that's full of um, cement. And I was just thinking, you know, could be harder, could be worse be driving that hot truck or something.
So, hey, I, I'm just, I'm staying clean and clear as far as this. I'm, I'm not doing anything I regret, so if I or feel sorry for, so if I have to speak up, I do integrity. I don't have to think too hard about what I say because I'm speaking truthfully. I don't have anything to feel ashamed of over there. I've just done my absolute best and I've done really good. Sometimes when you do a little too good, it invites people to kind of encroach upon you. And um, and I'm not, I don't have a big ego. So. How many people do you know that do the, the come? From, how many people do you know? And we'll end it. This is a unique scenario. When I got out of high school, I graduated high school. Okay, Then I got a sales job, making $15 an hour plus commission. That was back then. I'm 29, so that should tell you when I graduated high school. Okay, $15 an hour back then. Now I'm, I'm making $15 an hour. I was making $15 an hour back then. After the sales job, I went to work for McDonald's. I coerced my way into getting an opening shift four against one, and that became Monday through Friday with weekends off, nine hours to, per day, sometimes ten. Full-time job. Make a long story short, after five years, I came to an end, which is a long stretch anyway. Um, right after that, soon after that, there was a deadly debacle. Everyone was changing careers, not figure, figuring out what they wanted to do. I just wanted to go back to something like I was doing before. I didn't know that, though, at the time. Well, I, uh, one night I sat down, I just applied everywhere. But all places that I were kind of strategic. And, um, and the one that worked out happened to be right across the street from the place that it didn't, that I was at previously. Even when I'm out there, I'm looking at it. And I always thought it wasn't going to work the first day because of the strange times we were in when I started. And who knows how strange it's going to get next. But I'll, I'll get back to you. Sorry for the ramble, but I hope you appreciate it.